<clears throat> this is a story I like that I want to share with you. I remember it well, so well, that it feels like it happened yesterday, but really it happened many years ago. I was a young student at Gallaudet. I had gone home to New York for the summer. It was after my first year at Gallaudet. For a whole month of June, I searched for a job. It was hard. There was no work to be found. There were so many other students like myself searching for work. Really, it was a very frustrating experience for me. Every time I would go into an office to apply for the job, they would say no, right to my face. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we have no openings. One morning, I was reading the newspaper and there was an advertisement for a dishwasher at a summer camp. I thought, sure, a dishwasher? It sounds good. Enthused, I went to the office, which was on 4th Street near 5th Avenue. I was, ex I was excited. This was my first time. I arrived. I filled out the application. And I stood there waiting. Finally, the receptionist called me in. I entered the room. Standing there was a the manager. He had glasses on. He looked down at my paper and began speaking. I said, oh, I should probably explain that I'm deaf. Excuse me, I, I don't hear. And he said, what? I'm deaf, I responded. He said, oh. He told me to walk out the door. So I followed his instructions. I went out the door, closed it behind me, and found myself in the hallway next to the elevators. Did he just shove me off like that without any explanation? So I got into the elevator and I wrote it down and I felt very sad to think he could do that without any explanation. You know, it's not required that you have to be hearing to get a job like that. So I went outside into the street. There was a lot of people walking back and forth and bumping into me cars bustling around. The sun was beating down. It was such a hot day. I took a few steps. I stopped and I thought, I could give up just easy like this. But I won't be able to continue on my, with my life like that. I better go up there and talk to him and discuss. I went back into the building, began writing on a piece of paper while I was on my way up the elevator. I got into the room, the receptionist said, uh, excuse me, nope, I went right in. I handed him my note. I handed it to the foreman and he took it and he instructed me to leave. I said, oh no, no, I want you to read this. So he unfolded it, looked it over. And I explained to him, I'm a student. I go to college. I need this job. Really, dishwashing does not require that you have to be hearing. I have two arms. I'm strong. And I wrote all that down. And he said, let me tell you something. Sit down. Can you read lips, he asked. He said, well, a little bit. So he began talking. We 
chatted back and forth, and I got the job. I'll never forget that day. I arrived at the summer camp. It was in Minnesota. It was beautiful out. All the trees and scenery. Everything was gorgeous. I was excited to begin as my as the dishwasher position. I grabbed the dishes. I was getting them in and out, cleaning them. Oh man, did I end up hating that job. But I had to make a living. For a month, I worked like a horse. And on the last day, the camp advisor was looking for volunteers to help a farmer with collecting hay. Oh, I raised my hand. Sure, I wanted to do that. But really, not, well, it wasn't that exciting. I just wanted to get out of the kitchen. <laughs> so early the next morning, a group of us met up with the farmer and began shoveling the hay. We would load it into a wagon, and that would be brought all the way over to the barn. We worked all morning, lifting and throwing the hay. My hands, they were cut up and blistered. <clears throat> but I just bared through it and continued to work. That afternoon, it was time for lunch. The group of us grabbed our food, began eating, and once we were finished, we were exhausted. We decided to take a brief nap under the tree and rest for about an hour. I remember waking up, looking around, and I was alone. They had left, to, went back to work without me. I got up and I ran back to work, grabbed my pitchfork. I arrived on the scene, and guess who I saw? the foreman standing upon the mound of hay. He made a face at me just like that. This was my first frustration. I felt like I should just turn around and leave. But I thought to myself, I better just keep quiet. It's better for me to just continue working. I turned around, I grabbed my fork, and I continued to shovel. Mounds and mounds of hay grew, and they rose and rose. I had to keep moving them into the wagon, and the sun beat it down. All of a sudden, it began to rain. We were shouting to everyone, hurry, hurry, we need to load the wagon. Fill it. We need to bring it to the barn before the rain gets in. So we worked and worked. It was driving us crazy. We, we arrived at the barn. The foreman instructed me and another personnel to go onto the loft. The two of us would be standing upon there while they shoveled the hay. And we, our responsibility was to spread it out. As it rose, it would continue coming at us. So what happened? Two men. I'm sorry, two men were shoveling. And I stood there trying to spread it all out, but it continued coming at me. All the dust, I couldn't breathe. I coughed as I continued to throw it at me. I saw the foreman standing there enjoying himself. One more minute, I don't think I could continue. I was going to give up. But he told me, all right, you get down there and switch with me. So he climbed up top in the loft. I said, all right, and I got down, stood outside for a moment, got a breeze, I got a breath of fresh air, grabbed my pitchfork, and I began shoveling at it. It was my turn. I was ready, I was going faster and faster. He couldn't keep up. He was getting buried in it. The hay went above his head, I just kept going. It was going everywhere, shoveling and shoveling. Finally, it was done. I looked up at him, and it began to rain. I laid there on the ground, letting the rain hit me. 
minute later, I opened my eyes. And I stood up and washed, brushed off my face, got ready to go. And I saw the foreman standing there, smoking a cigarette, looking up at me. He walked over, put his hand on my shoulder. At that moment, I felt as if I had been knighted with a sword upon my shoulder. I walked on, enjoying the scenery, a lone man.